Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Synth Stuff. This is the Gaia 2, and it is a true virtual analog synth, unlike the original Gaia. There are three things that it does that tells you that this is a true virtual analog. We're going to look at those three things and then discover how you can use those in creating your sounds. Coming up. When the original Gaia came out, it looked like a virtual analog synthesizer. It had all the same controls as a regular subtractive synth. Oscillators, it had filters, it had envelopes, all the stuff that looks like an analog synthesizer. It sounded like an analog synthesizer, but it wasn't because it was entirely digital. There was one giveaway that told you it was not a true virtual analog, and that is the oscillators. The oscillators themselves were not true oscillators. They were samples kind of like the JD-800, which has the same type of technology. In fact, there are a lot of parallels in the JD-800 and the original Gaia. The original Gaia had the four, or was it three? I think it was three. Three different oscillator and full engines. The JD-800 has four, one, two, three, four. Each of those is a complete engine with its own oscillators and envelopes and a full signal chain. So it's almost multi-tambral. Well, it is multi-tambral. You could actually select those layers on and off, and so a patch could consist of those different layers, and you could have different sounds in each of those and switch between them or layer them. When the Gaia 2 came out, it was a very different synthesizer. It did not have the layers like that. It has a very traditional layout. It has three oscillators, and then all the modulation and so on that you would expect to see in a typical virtual analog synthesizer. The first oscillator is wavetable, so there are a bunch of wavetable sounds in there. The, we're not going to be talking about that one today. We're going to be dealing exclusively with oscillators 2 and 3. Let me tell you why. The Gaia 2 has something very different that makes it a true virtual analog synth. I'm going to initialize the tone, so now we have a very simple tone. We have three oscillators here, and I'm going to turn off mixer for oscillator one. We're not going to be using that. That's our wavetable. Oscillators two and three are our virtual analog synths, and I'm going to switch them both to sawtooth so we can hear those. Oscillator two, we can hear. Oscillator three, we can hear. We played them both. We can detune one of them a little bit, get some phasing. So the first thing we're going to talk about is cross-modulation. Cross-modulation is where one oscillator is used to modulate a second mod oscillator, but then the second oscillator then goes back and modulates the first oscillator again. So that's where the cross comes in. The, the, the oscillators are modulating each other. For that, we want to hear oscillator, I think it's oscillator 2 that this works on. Yep. Okay, so oscillator three, we're gonna turn off. Oscillator two, we're gonna to listen to, and we're gonna turn on cross modulation. Now, if we alter the sounds of the, the, the pitchings, pitches and so on of the different oscillators, we'll get different sounds. There's also two different types of cross-modulation that we can use that we can change from cross-modulation one and two. So here's one. And if we go to two, it's a very different sound. So that's cross-modulation. Next, we have sync and ring. And the reason why this tells us that this is a virtual analog is because it is physically changing what each oscillator is producing. It's changing the waveform of that oscillator. If you're playing just sampled oscillators like in the Gaia 1, and I did a whole video on this, I'll put a link to it up here. You can see how I showed the Gaia uses just samples instead of oscillators. If you're playing samples, you can't dynamically change what those samples are playing based on math, which is what this is doing, because the they're just samples. So here, we are actually generating these 
as a virtual analog, there's a, a computer program in here that's generating these oscillator shapes mathematically, and we are changing the math that's being used to create those oscillators by using these controls. You'll notice there are the four tones on here, or layers, that are on the JD800, and you can adjust those. However, if you look at the wave generator, which is its oscillator, there's no ring modulation, no cross modulation, no oscillator sync, no oscillator level uh, modulation whatsoever. You still get great sounds though. But those sounds are all sampled. What about the Juno 106? It's analog. So where on the oscillators do we find its oscillator sync and so on? Well, we don't because if you see, it says DCO, there's only one, there's only one oscillator. So we can't modulate one oscillator from another oscillator when the whole synthesizer only has one oscillator. So there are no oscillator level modulation options on the Juno 106. So next, let's look at uh, ring modulation. So if we go shift here and this will blink, that tells us we're now doing ring modulation. And for ring modulation, we are also gonna listen to oscillator two. So we'll have everything else turned off. What ring modulation does is it takes oscillator two and three and it multiplies those together mathematically. So the result is not a sound from either of them. Instead, it's a sum and difference between the two and it will change as the oscillators go in and out of phase or, or different pitches or different types of oscillators. So what we're left with is just the side tones and not the original carrier or modulator. <laughs> That's ring modulation. Okay, there is one other type of modulation on here and that is oscillator sync. So oscillator sync is when you have two different oscillators and they are both playing. And in this case, we're gonna be listening to oscillator three and we're gonna turn off two. And we're listening to oscillator three and every time oscillator two finishes playing, it's going to reset oscillator three, the waveform to the beginning of its waveform. So we're gonna be modifying, syncing oscillator three to oscillator two. So I'm gonna set up uh, oscillator three say about there, and we're gonna use oscillator two down lower, and then let's pitch oscillator two around. So you can hear that note from oscillator three is still playing, but it's being, os it's being also modified by oscillator two. So if we change this to a square wave, hollow sounding. What if they're sawtooth? That's oscillator sync. So if we go back to, say, cross mod. That's a pretty cool sound. So we can mix between the two. We're gonna hear oscillator three, and oscillator two is the one that's cross modded. So we could say uh, LFO1, I'm gonna hold that down, turn the cross mod. So now LFO1 is modulating the cross mod. That's cross mod. And that, it's an example of what you can do to give kind of motion and modulation to your sounds. 
All right, I hope you learned something from that. If you like this video, you wanna see more like it, click like, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out when you do that. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, please leave them in the comments section below. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.